Good morning. We uh, turn now uh, today to Thanksgiving, which will be here in just a few days. Uh, and Pastor Dawn has turned to uh, Philippians for her scripture for this uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving. Uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four through nine. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say, be glad. If you're familiar with this passage, uh, you probably are familiar and, I mean, more used to hearing uh, it interpreted, uh, translated, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Um, let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all your requests to God in your prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent, if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. All that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things. Whatever you learned, receive, heard, or saw in us, the God of peace will be with you. The um, comes from Paul's ministry at Philippi. Uh, you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were looking at Lydia as one of the heroes of the faith. Uh, Lydia is one of the central characters of Paul's time in um, uh, Philippi. And if you go to Acts 16, you can find the whole story uh, as much as we uh, can, can know of Paul's ministry at uh, uh, the Philippi, the, what we know as Philippians today in his writing. Um, the vision, uh, Paul has a, a vision during the night. He's debating uh, and contemplating where he's to go next in his ministry. Um, he's in what's modern day Turkey, contemplating expanding on into the interior of Turkey and where he should go there and it's during the night that he has this vision of the man from Macedonia who's standing there saying come on over here now Macedonia is the uh, the, the uh, area geographic area that we know as Greece today uh, and so uh, Paul's being beckoned in this vision to come from Asia into Europe and Philippi uh, is the first uh, church that Paul plants on the European continent. Um, Philippi is located, was named after um, uh, Philip, who's father of Alexander the Great. And it is a strategically located uh, city. Now Paul, in deciding places that he was going to start a church, he always looked for the strategic uh, advantage. Um, the places that Paul chose and, and, and spent time establishing churches were first and foremost centers of activity, uh, mostly centers of commerce in that geographic area. And, and Philippi is no different there. Um, the Romans, uh, interesting thought that came to me when I was researching this, um, the Philippi was a Roman colony, and the Roman colonies were uh, settled, as, as we talked a couple weeks ago, by uh, retired Roman soldiers. Um, they were given Roman citizenship, no matter w whether or not they had it by birth. If they didn't, they were given Roman citizenship, and they were um, given provisions to, to live in these areas, these colonies. And so they, they served to establish a core. Um, 300 uh, seems to be the, the uh, um, 
number that, that they looked upon to have a, a enough of a core value to influence the area, that 300 soldiers and their families, retired soldiers, would come and they would instill the Roman traditions, Roman dress, uh, language, uh, laws, traditions, customs, uh, by their practice and influence the area. They also served uh, by their presence, being retired soldiers, uh, they were sort of like the Army Reserves. Uh, there were soldiers in these colonies, uh, contingents of soldiers, to keep the peace, but they were also there to protect the road system. And the road system that the, the Romans developed were so that they could uh, rapidly move uh, soldiers and their support from one place to another. Now, there's a parallel there uh, that I had never made the connection. Uh, President Eisenhower had observed in World War II the Autobahn uh, highway system in Germany, and it served the German army uh, very well in being able to mobilize their troops. And one of the overriding factors in the establishment of our interstate system in the United States was not for commerce, it was military. Mm. It was to establish a network of roads so that the military could rapidly move uh, troops from one area to another, um, here again, to, to maintain the peace there. And, and this is a direct parallel with what the Roman government had set up there. Um, but Paul comes to Philippi and he establishes a, a city there. Um, and this happened around AD 52. It's on Paul's second, uh, second missionary journey. Uh, he's made one journey through Asia. Uh, he's gone back to Jerusalem. He's gone out again on a second journey, uh, retracing his steps uh, through those churches in Asia and, and looking for where to go from there and comes over into Europe um, to Philippi and, and starting the church there. Now his time in Philippi, as you read the story in Acts, was not a, a tranquil, peaceful time. We know that he went uh, and, and started a prayer group or started meeting with a prayer group of women uh, from the story of Lydia. But as you also read the story, uh, you know that uh, Paul was uh, persecuted by the Roman government uh, and the, the Jews, uh, Jewish religious leaders who had followed Paul around were stirring things up, uh, sort of whispering in the, the, the Roman authorities' ears, uh, you know what Paul's doing over there? Yeah, you ought to go check out and make sure you know what he's doing. He's teaching people things that are contrary. Um, he, he's a subversive uh, person. And Paul was ultimately ar arrested. Um, illegally, as it turns out. And, and Philippi is, is where uh, when they come and, and they realize their mistake and they come to Paul in prison and they say, oh, we've, we've messed up here. We shouldn't have done that. Uh, you can go now. And Paul says, oh, no, you screwed this up. You, you let the governor, uh, the mayor, come and, and, and escort me out of here. Um, you're not going to sweep this away. Mm -hmm. This is still going to be a, a high-profile thing. You made it high-profile. It's going to continue to be that way. And um, then, then Paul leaves. Uh, it seems to me that Paul leaves Philippi to try to um, um, bring some peace to the church. The church, he's, he's established the church and the leaders there, and he wants them to have some uh, peace to be able to expand the church and continue to, to make disciples uh, as, as Jesus commanded us for the transformation of the world. Um, and, and so Paul leaves, but the persecution is still there uh, for the church. And Paul, in writing, uh, is writing to encourage um, the, the people. He uh, in writing, he gives thanks for their ministry, he encourages them, and he also wants to uh, uh, 
have s help them to unify, to be one body, um, and not diver uh, divisive as we are experiencing today. Um, in the passage that we have today, and I have to say that um, in, in the years of looking for scriptures for Thanksgiving, um, this is not a scripture that I ever turned to. And in reading through it, I, I can't help but wonder why I never got to anything like this. Um, I tended to focus on the Old Testament and the um, Thanksgiving offerings um, that, that the people were making uh, to, to God. But Paul is uh, saying that uh, we need to be thankful. And he tells the people um, that the way that, he, in verse 6, um, don't be anxious about anything, rather bring up all your requests to God in your prayers and petition, along with giving thanks. Um, don't be anxious about anything. Don't worry about anything. Uh, I think I've shared this with you all before. Uh, when I worked for Xerox uh, in the service business, it's, it's a cycle. Um, it's feast of famine. Uh, one day you might have not have hardly anything to do, and the next day there's no way that you can uh, you service all the machines that are broke. And we had a practice in Roanoke of meeting together, my fellow uh, co-workers, of meeting together for lunch. And sometimes during these uh, lunch gatherings, uh, some of my co-workers, and I have to confess that sometimes I was among them, not, not always uh, to the way some of them were, but sometimes I was in there too, uh, complaining about how are we going to get all this done? And one of our co-workers, he would just sit there, and after a while, he'd kind of say, he said, well, you know, worry's not going to fix any of those machines. <laughs> In other words, if you're going to sit here and bellyache about it, there's not going to anything get done. The only way it's going to get done is if you still go and start doing something. One at a time. <laughs> and, and Paul uh, comes back to that idea here at the end of this passage. But don't be anxious. Uh, uh, pray. Um, yesterday was our charge conference, uh, our, our district, I mean our charge conference and our district conference. And as always is the case, uh, there are um, workshops that are held along with this um, to, to uh, more for people to get to know each other, uh, I think, than any, any real learning that takes place. But anyhow, I sit in a workshop led by Leanne Taylor. Leanne is our, um, employed by the district as a coordinator, no, it's spiritual, she has a title, it's about this long, <laughs> but the bottom line is spiritual um, renewal, uh, spiritual revitalization. And when we walked in the room, uh, she had helped in the leading worship and had left to go to the room that we were meeting in. And when those of us that were coming to her workshop walked into the room, she was sitting there in tears. I mean, tears just running down her face. And, and she went on to explain to us that um, one of her spiritual practices is to pray for uh, the churches in the district, to pray for the leaders in the district uh, by name, not just a generic prayer, but she has a list of people, and she, her practice is that she sits down with that, and she goes down that list and, and praying for people. And the way things are, are set up in our church right now, there's not a lot of getting together, a lot of uh, uh, electronic uh, communication. And, and she said this is the first mm -hmm. time, uh, she's also dealt with some health issues this year, where she was out of her job for a period of time. But she said, this is the first time in a long time that you all, the people that I've been praying for, are here in front of me. Um, and it was just, her tears were of joy. Um, that, that what I've been doing is worth something. Um, and, and so in a way, what she was expressing to us 
was thanksgiving. And Paul says that that should be a part of our prayer life, that we should always be expressing uh, thanksgiving to God. Um, he talks about... Uh, Starting in verse 8, uh, focus na from now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent, if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. And then he goes on to list them. Um, all that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Um, there is a practice among high-performing athletes uh, a mental practice uh, for a basketball player it's to walk around the court and looking at the basket and in your mind making that shot a and in your mind the ball is see it following the ball up and into the basket uh, for baseball players uh, it's standing there at, at the plate and, and imagining the ball being pitched at you and, and in your mind, uh, tracking and swinging and hitting that. Not swinging and missing, but always <laughs> swinging and hitting the ball. Um, so it, it's a focus of mind on what it is that you wish to accomplish. Uh, rather than focusing in your mind on um, the, the things that are, are obstacles um, to living your life in the way that that you know you should uh, or I guess another way of uh, saying that is instead of focusing on sin uh, ways that you miss the mark uh, as a, a Christian um, and then listing these things uh, that you might focus your mind on um, and I think there's a lot of merit there in what Paul has said he says here um, and then he uh, verse 9 Practice these things, um, these things that you've listed. Uh, but then he goes on to say, whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us. Um, and the thought that, that I had as I, I was thinking about that is that there there is a uh, practice or a, a not a practice, um, a tendency sometimes for a teacher to say, um, do as I say, not as I do. But Paul's saying something entirely different here. He's saying, do as I do. Uh, I have learned these things myself. I have practiced them in my life. You have observed me practicing them. I have taught you these things. So now it's your turn to practice them. And in so doing, you will influence other people. And, and so that there's a uh, element here of doing Thanksgiving right, uh, as Pastor Dawn has labeled this, and I, I'm not sure where uh, how she's approaching this, but the the thought that has uh, come to me in reading this passage and thinking about it, and thinking in terms of her title, is uh, that there's a right way to live your life. Uh, there's a right way to give thanks. Um, one that doesn't draw attention to you but would focus more attention on God where it all comes from and Paul wraps that all up in the last sentence the God of peace will be with you um, you may have noticed uh, when I do the pastoral prayer that one of the last things that I say um, or ask for is that we might receive peace, uh, not as the world gives, but as God, uh, as Jesus brings to us. And that comes from the four, uh, 13th, hmm. it comes from the Gospel of John. Um, the, the reference just went out of my head there. <laughs> um, but it's the, the chapter of, uh, in my house there are many mansions. Uh, and, and Jesus is also saying do not be do not let yourself be anxious in that passage 
but there's there's a peace with you. So as you approach Thanksgiving, as you sit down with your families, if you're able to gather with your families, uh, I invite you to uh, do so with these words of Paul, not to be anxious, but to focus on, on that relationship with God. And I hope that you'll be joining us a little bit later here in worship and that uh, God's blessings and peace will be upon you.